Shalom everyone, uh, look, this video is going to be a bit different than um, the other type of videos I'm used to, to make. I want to talk a little bit more about that Natalie Holloway case. For those that don't remember anymore, it was um, a case from 2005. Uh, this teenager, Natalie Holloway, she was 18 years old, she just graduated high school and she went to Aruba on holiday with some other friends and she disappeared. Now, they found a suspect um, named Joran van der Sloot. He's a Dutch, um, he's Dutch and a Dutch citizen, so, but in English it's called Joran van der Sloot. Well, I'm going to use the Dutch pronunciation now. This is him. This him at the time in 2000, around 2005. He was 17 years old back then. Now he's um, 28 years old. Um, well, this is a news article. As we know, Jorn von, Sl von der Sloot was basically he was never convicted for any um, crime against Natalie Holloway. Um, he later fled to, I believe it was Peru, and there he allegedly murdered Stephanie Flores, the daughter of a media, a Mac, uh, of a media um, businessman. I mean, the daughter of an influential media magnet, a media baron, basically. And um, he fled to Chile, I believe, but they captured him, and now he's sitting in sitting a life sentence in, I believe it's only 28 years of sentence in um, a prison in Peru. And strangely enough, he managed to marry and even get, became father while he's incarcerated for, for homicide. How that's possible is also quite remarkable. But anyway, I'm not going to discuss whether or not this man is guilty of Natalie Holloway's disappearance because we don't even know if the teenager died. We seriously don't. Okay? People assume she's dead. People think it's likely she's dead, but they have no evidence to back it up. And it's, there's not even con conclusive evidence that he even murdered Stephanie Flores. So I'm not going to make any judgment concerning those two cases. And I'm not defending Joran von der Sloot here because he has revealed himself to be very he, um, unreliable in the media. He has also revealed that um, he tends to lie often. So I'm not here to defend the guy, but one, what I want to make clear in this video is that this guy, strange enough, reveals a lot about ourselves. Now, listen to what I'm saying here. I'm, I, when I say ourselves, I'm talking about society as general, okay? And what I mean by that is the following. Back in 2005, I can remember it very well when this news came out. Um, it was all over the media, okay? And the mother of Natalie Holloway even had connections to the Bush administration, and it was because of that that it went all around. It's not the first time that a blonde woman from America goes on a holiday and she disappears. So what was so special about this girl disappearing? Well, her mother had connections to politicians. That's, that's one thing. But um, that's not all. That's not all. The, this case of Natalie Holloway is it, it's very suspicious. Why? Because the media coverage of what happened, I mean, the story that we were being told throughout the media, it didn't add up. Here they arrest a guy who's a suspect. There is no DNA evidence. There's no body found. There's no camera footage. Let's, uh, because, look, there, are, there were cameras around on Aruba at the time. But strangely enough, there are no camera footage of concerning what was going on around the hotel at the time. 
those uh, those images suddenly disappeared. Um, and there were other things like the girl was only missing for about one day or or two, and already there were a lot of flyers printed all around uh, to, to with rewards to find Natalie Holloway. Now, if someone goes missing, it takes a while before people know that she's missing. And if people are not going to give someone as miss just like that, they are going to search for the individual. It's only after 24 hours, and in some countries, 48 hours, that someone is reported missing. So, and then it takes a while for, for the police to process it that she's missing. And it also has to be reported in, it also has to be reported in the country where she's from. Okay, that takes a while. And then you can have, people can know about it, and uh, people can begin to spread flyers. But this whole thing here, went, this whole case went very quickly. That's the first thing that's suspicious about it. And now, now, now you have to meet the media story. Joran van der Sloot. He was the villain. In America, people were in rage against the guy. In the Netherlands, man, back at the time you had Hives. Hives was... Uh, maybe on... Uh, Heis was a social um, a social media from the Netherlands, and it was quite popular. But then Facebook came and Facebook took it over. Okay, and now it only has become a website where people can play games. But I had Hives at the time. I was quite active on it, and Joran van der Sloot had a Hives profile, and people were bombarding his profile with nasty comments, with death threats, and with all kinds of foul accusations. Only a few comments I saw of people saying, there is no evidence this guy is guilty of anything, leave the guy alone. You see, now again, I'm not defending the guy because he, he did some criminal stuff, he did some very weird and evil things uh, also afterwards. He also began to benefit from the, no the notoriety that he received. That's not something wise to do, but he did it. He also got involved in all kinds of... Um, he even almost went to prison in Thailand also. So I'm not here to... I'm not his advocate, okay? But this case concerning this man here, over here, it reveals that how he... how he, It reveals the wickedness of people. Why? Because I thought that we grew up with the idea that you're innocent until proven guilty. It makes sense, doesn't it? If someone is, let me say, if there's an allegation someone committed a crime, like rape or murder, whatever it is, or theft, then there needs to be, the, if it's theft, then something must be missing from someone. Okay? If nothing is missing, there is no theft. And if something is missing, there must be a link with someone before you can make the allegation they may be the one behind the theft. That's logical, right? The same with murder, with homicide. You have to have evidence, forensic evidence, to back up that there even is a crime. But about this case here, the only thing we have is our coverages from the media that are repeated over and over again, and you have, a lot, and you have this emotional message of a young, sexual attractive young woman uh, being missed and her family that said. That's what we had. And what do you know? People reacted upon it. And they began to label this guy as the ashes of evil. And you know, when that guy came to the Netherlands, he was studying here in the Netherlands, he couldn't have, have a normal life anymore. I, because everywhere he went, that stigmatization of the media haunted him. So look, I'm not relieving him from responsibility for all the other great stuff he was doing. Nevertheless, um, if someone is not permitted to have a tranquil life of just doing their business, then don't be surprised if they begin to act stupid, okay? But yet... Nobody wants to 
take responsibility for how they've treated this man. Apart from his own actions and his own attitude, the way people behave towards him is very disgusting. Very disgusting. You see? And look, this reveals another thing about us. When I say us, because also believers have to watch out with this tendency. We tend to hold people guilty until they have proven their innocence. Why? Because we are so obsessed with seeking validation for our own emo for our emotion for our emotions that we cannot handle it when our idols are sm are smitten down. We can't handle it. And this is not just about Joran von der Sloot here. It's not just has to do with the Natalie Holloway case. When people make up their mind emotionally about something, they close themselves off from all other options. But now, they, because they've closed themselves off from all other options and all other outcomes, now they have to validate and affirm their decision to lock themselves in. Because when you make up your mind about something, without any evidence to back it up, and without any, um, uh, let me say, without any objective, good reason to do it, what happens now is that now you have to defend yourself. Now you have to lie against yourself to defend what you've made your mind uh, about. You see? And um, look... In this case, people began to label him as the murderer, the villain, the blah, 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 the disgrace, and all of that. The people began to use him to charge all their frustration upon, all their negativity upon. Now, this guy is now somewhere in prison. But let's say that in 2010, for example, there was evidence that he didn't commit the crime. What would, have, what would have all those millions of people have done? Would they, would they have bombarded his social media with apologies and admitting how wrong they were? No, they wouldn't have done it. Look, probably you who are watching this video have been through a similar thing. Not similar in the sense of what he went through, went through, but similar that people hold you guilty without any evidence and they were putting pressure on you to conform to their accusation. This happens all the time. You know, and the thing is, we approve of it. We approve of victimizing weak people, or weak in the sense that people can't defend themselves. We tend to, to agree with victimization of others so that we can preserve our selfish interactions. We do. And it's easy to target someone who already is messed up. Okay? That's easy to do. Because now we can always point at their faults and their ugliness as an excuse for us acting out. But it's only an excuse. You see, back at the time, the I mean the years after 2005, when this case was basically, I had a lot of media attention. It, you know, this case really opened my eyes. To see how determined, stubborn, and homicidal people can be in defending their emotional, their, to defend their emotional addictions, because that's really what it is. When you choose to vilify an individual or vilify a group of people, what you're doing is you are acting out the frustration of your addictions. Because it's an easy way for you to maintain your addictions and not have to face the, the, the fact about, about yourself. Again, concerning this man over here, this was him as a kid. Well, people don't like seeing these kind of pictures because then they have to be reminded he is a human being. Because the thing is, when you fil vilify someone, you take away their humanity. You, you imagine they're not human. And because you don't imagine they are human, you don't have to feel bad about how you treat them. What if 
um, there, there is a kit of this age, and we begin to vilify a kid like that. People will become horrified because we will be remembered uh, he or she is a human being, just a kid. But when someone is a so-called an adult, just go ahead, victimize them. Who cares? If they can't defend themselves, it's their own fault. Look, what we can do for this man now is pray on his behalf for his repentance, that he'll be delivered, and that he will find Jesus Christ. We can do that. But far more important, if we pray, we should pray for the advancements of God's kingdom, because, I mean, for real. This, you cannot have the kingdom of God being successful while Satan's kingdom remains standing. In order for God's kingdom to flourish, Satan's kingdom has to fall apart. And that's what we are experiencing now, and we should keep on praying and fasting to do God's will. Now, the reason I decided to talk about this case is because people often permit themselves to be dragged into all these hypes. Okay? And now, I'm not I'm not making any moral statement here. I'm not saying this video that if you vilified your weapon from the slot in the past that you are immediately doomed. No. There is repentance and uh, there's restoration. I'm not making this video to condemn anyone. I'm making this video to reveal unto you that this is how the world is. You are guilty until proven innocent. Once you, are, you have been targeted with an accusation, others have the tendency to join that accusation. Why? Because now they have an outpouring for their frustration, for their difficulties. Isn't that the reason why we are so, so obsessed with fitting in to society, with fitting in, with being accepted? Why? Because we don't want to be victimized? Look, what I've what I've told what I, what I've said about this case you can apply it to any case. People tend to hold on to their addictions, and to hold on their to their addictions, they look for victims, and the easiest victim he 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 or she gets a full blow. And about Natalie Holloway, I'm not sure whether she's alive or not. Neither am I going after this case. It can be she's alive now somewhere in Latin America, working as a prostitute, I'm not sure, it can be that she went to a clinic to um, to get rid of a drug addiction, maybe that's the case, or it can be that her family, relatives, maybe her relatives are Satanists that sacrificed her for fame and fortune, I'm not sure about that, maybe it is because that whole, this whole media circus uh, you know, it was quite profitable and a lot of people made money because of it, okay? At the expense of this guy, of course. Or it can be that she indeed was murdered by either Joran von der Sloot or by others. I'm not sure what happens, neither am I going after the case to find out. I'm just using this case to reveal unto you this wicked tendency to look for victims. And the Lord does not want us to contribute to it, nor to agree with it. That being said, you all, be blessed. Remain in prayer.